Welcome everybody to I, the Serpent Tarot for another Pick a Card. So today's Pick a Card, we're looking at where really in this world is your true spiritual home, but we're going to try and use decks and concepts that take us just out of, not, it's not just in the 3D of a location here, but it's sort of like a bigger thing about spiritual energy and, and so forth. Uh, and that's because it's a kind of a mystical or magical way I came to wanting to do this reading. And it came from a video that I watched which is on a channel called Magic Me, M-A-G-I-C-K-M-E, run by somebody called Jason Louv. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing his name correctly. His surname is spelled L-O-U-V. And he is a magician, and he did an interview with Damien Eccles, who's also a magician. So two high magicians is what I'm talking about there, not the kind of get up and do sort of illusions on stage type of magicians. And they were talking about, it was titled something like magic and, you know, the issues of good and evil and a whole bunch of things. It was just a really fascinating conversation that ran over a couple of hours. And one of the things that they talked about that I found really interesting and inspired me for this reading is at one point... Damien Eccles was talking about how he had always thought he'd always live in New York, that that was kind of, he felt it was his spiritual home. And he talked about how he felt he really connected with what he called the egregore energy of New York. So for those who are not familiar with what an egregore is, it's the concept of a, a spiritual being or energy that's created by our focus on it. So you could argue, for instance, uh, that tarot archetypes are like that. I, it's a great tarot reading and review site Waves of Your Soul on YouTube, um, where I first heard this idea and I thought it was a brilliant idea. There's this concept that, you know, the, the, the judgment card or the hierophant, almost by its use by so many people over a long period of time, it's almost like it creates that energy as an egregore. And I feel, to, I always feel there's a magic with tarot in that how do the right cards come out? I think it might have to do with that, the interchange with a kind of egregoric energy, just in broad terms. He was talking about that being created by almost the zeitgeist, the feeling, the types of people that are drawn to a location. So he was saying like New York, you know, so there's all those sort of songs about, you know, being successful there and what that means. And there's a lot of a high vibe there. And it's almost like the, the capital of the world in some ways, all sorts of things like that. But he was also saying that when the big health issue that happened in the last couple of years occurred, it shifted the energy so much that he no longer felt that connection. And he then moved to New Orleans, I think it was. So I thought it was such an interesting idea around, you know, what would be your spiritual home? What would be the characteristics of it that then might make you be able to decide what would that best equate to in this world? Uh, and, and as I say, trying to step a little bit back from it. And the same day that I watched the video, I received a deck that I had ordered called Zeke Zakana, and you can see cards from it there. And it's a very otherworldly deck. And I thought it's a perfect deck for this because it takes us out of the concept of thinking, oh, this is New York, or this is London, or this is Sydney, or, or this is Dubai, or whatever it might be. It takes us to, to more what the energy, the spiritual energy might be. And so I wanted to use that deck to do it. Plus, it's just a fabulous deck. Just want to like a little bit of a heads up. Some of the cards have a little bit of like, it's very artistic, as you see. There's no photography or whatever, but it have sort of like some mild nudity. If that happens, you never know with YouTube. So I'll probably put a uh, crystal over it until the card's going to be covered in some other way, just if that happens. Um, but, you know, otherwise it's, it's like an absolutely gorgeous, fabulous deck, which I felt was exactly the sort of energy to, to take us out of a material concept into more an energetic, egregoric energy. So that's what we're looking at today. We're trying to work out what is the feel of your ideal place. Just as an aside too, there's a whole area of astrology called astrocartography that shows your, your natal chart changed into another place and see where there are good energies and not. So, you know, if you're sort of someone who's searching for your home on that kind of level, that's, that could be a useful thing to look into as well similar sort of thing, but I'm talking more here about the spiritual energy and how that might manifest as a egregore or zeitgeist or community feeling for a place that you live. So that's what we're going to be looking at. So what I asked Spirit with Zeke's Arcana was that I shuffled and I said the first three major Arcana cards that come up are going to be a doorway into the energy that we're looking at. And then I've also got some other Oracle decks under there to look at kind of the the kind of color energy, the sort of like the vibrancy energy of this, the, the sound. So I'm, I'm looking here almost visual 
oral and feeling like you would with NLP. So the, the color energy, the sound, and then also the feeling energy to get a sense about what that kind of vibration is as well for you in looking at what might be an ideal sort of place. And then we'll go through. There is a deck that talks about places on earth, to, but it's, it's going to be only one deck and we're only going to use one card out of that. We're looking much more, as I say, on the metaphysical level. So with no more ado, the first, you can go to more than one if you want because you are you might have a couple to choose from, you know, whatever, whatever works for you. But to help with the choice, the major arcana card for pole number one is judgment. For pole number two, it's the hierophant. And for pole number three, it's the wheel of fortune. When you know what reading or readings you want to go to, I've got the timestamps in the description box below and I'll see you there. Welcome pile one to your reading. So you came to the reading with judgment. It's a very interesting sort of version of judgment. Even the, even the horn that the angel is, is playing is sort of like quite interestingly portrayed. It's not, it's not the normal energy, but that, that's what you'd expect with this tarot deck. But I feel like if you're looking at judgment around a zeitgeist, there's a couple of things that really strike me. Firstly, is that you're looking for the place where you can find your calling, where you can most find your calling. So say your calling was music it might be one of the sort of cities in a country or whatever that that has a thriving music industry if you're calling was spiritual you may want to go and live on an ashram or or you know be a tibetan monk there's sort of something here about for you to find the right place you have to have a sense that this is taking you in the direction that you want to go the other side of it though could be for those who are more in the earthly side of this it's not so much like what's my calling but it's more that i i want to be somewhere where the power of judgment and policy and principle resides, then cities or towns um, that are connected to maybe the legal system or the political system or the social system could also be key to you. So any of those could be an energy that draws you. Um, but the other thing is I feel like you're meant to be seen. And the reason I do that is in this deck, look how all these eyes are looking up. I feel like there is almost you are meant to be somewhere where your judgment, your your calling, your discernment is is something that other people are watching. So I feel like it's it's not meant to be a place that's hidden away. I don't feel that you are meant to be sort of in a cabin in the remote woods. I feel like you're meant to be sort of somewhere that's a little bit more seen, a bit more visible. Now, of course, in this day and age, you could do that potentially through online as long as there was sort of internet coverage in a more remote place. But I, I do feel there's something about you being seen for your judgment, for your discernment, for your calling, that kind of thing associated with this. And the other energies, there's a lot of, I think you have to be somewhere where there is a lot of anticipation a lot of chances for new things to come, for your curiosity to be satiated. So I also think those these eyes may also be you looking, like looking emotionally for what what are the prospects here? It, ha it feels like it needs to be wide open. This is also because we've got forest here, and this talks about elementals, fairies, magic. So there's something wild, mysterious, yet to be discovered very magical where you can bring magic into what you do in in you know either a literal sense or just have a magical feeling about it but it feels like it's even if it's an established place it needs to be a little bit undiscovered or it needs to be drawing your curiosity in some way that that feels that you have an openness to do something and it's almost with the musical energy here Keith Richards it's a bit wild like with the forest and and with Keith Richards it feels like you are looking to see whether it's going to give you the scope to be true to who you are. So again, if you were looking at this like, you know, you wanted to be a lawyer or a barrister, it might be like, what place allows me, what aligns with my social conscience, what allows me to do the sorts of work I want to do, what allows me to do the kind of novel and interesting cases, it could be something like that. If it's not around, you know, the law or, or social causes or political causes, then I think this is all about a kind of wild energy to push the boundaries and really really expand out and look at what's possible. And I don't think you mind if it's a little bit questionable as to whether or not it's going to always work out. I think you're very brave. You're going to push the boundaries. This this sort of emotional energy doesn't feel like it's, I'm going to, to only come in if it's okay. This looks to me like if it, if it feels this sort of like wild energy where I could follow my calling and where I can push the boundaries, then yeah, I'm going to check it out. I feel like you might be sort of someone who who you know, maybe travels quite a bit, 
and like does that and checks things out, spends a little bit of time places before you make a decision to settle down. But, but I, I do feel that it's like you don't want to be too constrained. You, you do understand with the judgment card where sort of the rules and the culture matter and that you've got to find that fit, but you don't want to be too constrained in this. You want to have that sense of, of artistic or, or social or spiritual uh, openness. Like, the, the, this, there's something to be discovered here. Um, that's the kind of energy about the place, I think. So let's get a little bit more information with the tarot about what your ideal home or place is like. Um, let's look at how do you create that, you know, how do you get that egregoric energy between you and others? You know, if you think you might be somewhere where there is the potential of that or it's there, how do you create that, co-create it with others? And then we'll have a look at how are you different to the everyday there? Like, what, what do you bring that's really special to that energy? So firstly... A little bit more about your ideal sort of home. The Five of Pentacles reversed. The King of Swords reversed. The Page of Swords. Sorry. The Tower here. You do like the wild, the different, the breakthrough. You don't want to be stuck with stage sort of things. And the Wheel of Fortune reversed. So I'm just taking a little bit of time in case I need to cover anything, as I said in the introduction. And there's a little bit of nudity in some of the cards in this deck. So you definitely want a community with others. Though I think that, the, interesting enough, you could live in a, in a cabin in the forest as long as you had internet connection. <laughs> like you could do that. Um, but you, you do want community with others. That is part of what you want. Um, but you want... There's something novel about the way of thinking and about the philosophy. It's like I feel for you just sort of following standard things is, is just not going to do it for you. you know. And you, you are quite open to the fact that if you are in that territory, you've got to wait and see what happens. Maybe sometimes people will not be being honest or whatever. Um, you're prepared to see that through. But you, you would do that. You would sacrifice that to following a calling rather than feeling too constrained. A lot of this is intellectual. You have a very smart groundbreaking sort of mind but you are looking for others that have that similar energy and I feel like yeah if you're not traveling to do it I feel like you you maybe do a lot of research online or something like that a lot of communication with others to try and find your people I actually wonder for some of you if your place isn't a place but it is kind of online and in the virtual world that that's where you feel most at home um, but whatever it is you don't want the stayed you don't want like spiritually, it doesn't feel like you'd want to go to a community that was very strongly one religion or something like that. If you went there, you'd want to break it all down on some level, and, and that's not always going to be welcome. I think you want you want the iconoclastic sort of energy, which is very interesting with judgment. <clears throat> so it is it is really connecting to your inner calling rather than, as I say, the more kind of potentially stuffy sort of like you know legal political sort of stuff. Um, but I also think you, you want to go somewhere that, that needs almost a turnaround with the Wheel of Fortune Rivers. It's almost like you'd like to go into somewhere that's, that's fallen apart a bit, maybe because it could no longer sort of sit in a particular old pattern. It's, it's got all the new energy and it's like it's, it's getting ready to start to rise <clears throat> so that maybe part of what you bring and with the others that you connect with is the way to rise and come out of that. But it, you'd be, you, kind of, you wouldn't blink about going into a into a city or a suburb or a town which had suffered some sort of economic or some other sort of issue, if you felt that like your way of doing things could combine to help turn that around and bring it from, it's almost like you, you've almost got a renovator's uh, energy in where you want to live. And this might even be like literally when you buy homes, you might or rent homes or whatever. It would be more buying because you'd have to do that to be able to renovate. You may like to do that. You might like to find places and, and build them into something new and wonderful and expand that sort of energy after they've, you know, fallen apart a bit. It's, just a, it's a very interesting energy because it's, you're not, you're an iconoclast, but you do want to connect to other people. And you do want to work towards the good. You're not, you're not just sort of breaking everything apart for the sake of doing it. You, you do want something sort of magical and good to come out of it. But it, it just feels like you've got to go into somewhere that, that, that almost needs to be revived and that you can create a new community and a different and more expansive way of doing things. So 
if you're there, if you found that, what are you creating with others? What is the kind of egregoric energy that you could create with others? You may already be somewhere like this. It may be an ideal that you want to go towards. Ah, the patron reverse. That's an additional major arcana in this deck. The queen of cups. The king of coins. The ace of cups reversed. Okay, firstly what this is saying is, <clears throat> excuse me, whatever energy you bring to the egregoric, you know, to the community, you're not looking to be its saviour, you're not looking to be its distant patron, you're not even looking to mend its heart. That's not what this is about. If you're looking at a place that, that could be sort of opened up, made a bit more wild, a bit more authentic, a bit more open to the new and you take it to new glories after former glories, which is almost what it feels like. You're much more interested in connecting the emotional feeling that you have here, which is this sort of anticipatory, let's see what happens, a curiosity with a material outcome, like, like actually creating something, creating wealth, creating a legacy, something like that. So this is not, you're not actually someone who just wants to go from one place to another. I mean, even if you were a renovator, that you would be doing it to build a fortune. But more generally, it's like you're not necessarily wanting to flit around. You'd be quite happy to settle somewhere if you found the right thing. But you're wanting to look at and be part of a community to expand it. But you don't want a role where you're really visible, you know, as, as the patron or something like that. You want to be part of a community that shares the, the material outcomes and the emotional connection. But you're not looking to be the fixer-upper. That's not what your energy is. Your energy is, is more the let's push the boundaries, let's, let's see what we can, we can actually achieve here without necessarily mollycoddling anyone, which is also probably why we've got judgment. I think you, 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 you know what you think about things. You don't want to have to censor that or take on some sort of role that doesn't feel like you're allowed to be free and explore. Okay, so therefore, how are you different from the other people that are there? King of Wands reversed. Page of Cups. And the Nine of Wands. I think what you want, you want an environment with this, with this forest and the Keith Richards area and with that kind of sense of anticipatory curiosity. I think you want a creative project. You want to be sort of somewhere where you can build something in community, you know, make it a little bit wilder, make it a little bit different, you know, stretch the, the boundaries, look at what it could be, maybe fix it up if it's had issues or whatever. And that's what you come in, that's what you're interested in doing. Uh, and you may well commit and stay there once you've done it, or it may be that you need to move around a bit because once you've done it, you want to go and do it somewhere else. But either way, what's different is that you're, although with the Queen of Cups, you are creating a heart-based energy egregorically with others, and you, you do contribute to that. You do not want to be the source of the heart-based thing. It's almost as though the others are more the kind of emotional energy. It's almost as though you look at it and you study it and you think that's interesting. And you help it come to its conclusion if it has sort of not got the almost creative energy to take it forward. So it's a bit like an energy where you're a creative genius, for instance. You, you, you kind of like you have inspiration coming out of everything, you know, and, and you found a place that has a lot of heart, wants to sort of recreate itself, you know, back to former glory or beyond former glory, whatever it is. It's got a real sense of like the Renaissance person, like you feel like a Renaissance person and you come in and you bring that energy and that's what you're contributing. But it's like you're contributing that energy, you're not doing it for them. So you, you're not necessarily the artist, it's more like you inspire that. It's like you, you, yeah, and, you and you don't want your money, you're not being like a patron of the arts either. It's more that you that you push the boundaries. I mean, you could be an artist, for instance. You could be, you know, there's many people in art and in music who do push a boundary, who like take take it. And there are people politically who push what they call the Overton window. So you, what people find acceptable or, or believe about something. So that could be part of your energy. But I feel like, I feel like it's like you're going in, you like to go in where 
you can see what the heart of the place is and what it's trying to be and you can see the blocks and you can help to unblock it because you just have this wilder, more elemental, magical energy and you're not afraid to do it. And you know this is your calling. So I feel like you might move between places quite a bit. Okay, so let's have a look at both the most celestial version of this and the most earthly version of this. So the celestial version, I'm using a deck called the Celestial Codex. Uh, it has both good and bad, like both very shadowy energies where there's, you know, and that could be for you because you might like to go into somewhere where there's a challenge. Um, but it also has very celestial, high order, high vibrational energy. So we just want to see a little bit about the celestial energy around your ideal home where you would create, you know, help to create the egregoric energy. And then we also want to look at somewhere in Earth that might have some of that energy with it, with the Earth Power Deck. So firstly, celestial energy. Wow, Void Walker. So that's interesting. I actually feel like I want to read to you from the book here because I think I think this shows how you're different because I keep saying it's like you, you're coming into this place that needs to have change and, and you're bringing something very different and you're pushing the envelope, but you're not necessarily doing it it's sort of interesting so the void um walker the sort of themes are mystery solitude journey into the unknown i think this is it you always want to want to see what else can be done what hasn't been experienced that kind of thing and it says that the void walker stands at the threshold of oblivion a solitary sentinel sentinel at the gates of the unfathomable it, the card signifies a voyage into the depths of the unknown, a willing plunge into the shadows where the fabric of reality thins and the uncharted begins. It's a call to embrace the darkness, not as an adversary, but as a silent ally in the quest for deeper understanding. So yeah, you always want to go deeper, push things further. You need to be in an environment that allows you to do that. You're kind of the one who could go to the outer reaches. What it makes me think of, you know, is like in the early mariners back in the day, um, used to have, they used to kind of do their maps and the bits that hadn't been looked at yet, they used to say, here be dragons. <laughs> and you're kind of the person who wants to go and check out the dragon, basically. Let's have a look at, and so you need a place that allows for that, that doesn't see that as too wild or too out there. Let's have a look at a kind of place on earth that might have a similar sort of, or, or another layer of your energetic profile that would be suitable. Doesn't mean you have to go and live here. This is just to give us another thing. Wow. Statue of Liberty, America. So I think this is saying that there are places in America where you can do this. I am free to be who I really am. I have a right to my own happiness and sanctuary. I am free to be authentic. There is a deep freedom energy for you. But you go to realms that others don't go. You push it more than others would. So I think there would be places in America that are more open to that than others, for instance. So that's something to think about. You don't have to live in America, but it's just an example. Okay, so let's have a look at a little bit more about the egregoric energy. Let's look at it in the, the energy of like mystical or myth, mythical creatures. So a little bit more about what um, that, that would be. And then for each of them, we're going to get an alchemy thing to see the transformative energy. I'll just throw a whole lot of them away. So I'm just going to pause to pick the, the deck up. Okay, pick them up again. That could be a bit of your energy, like throw out what isn't. What isn't going to work? So we're going to look at a couple of mystical or mythical creatures <clears throat> and their advice too around the kind of egregoric energy that you'd be trying to create with others there. And then with the Wild Unknown Alchemy deck, the kind of alchemical change energy you would bring to that egregore, to that, to that community, to that place. So firstly, we have Cerberus. Oh, wow, the Hounds of Hell. Yeah, that would make sense with the Void Walker. Friendship. In life, have a friend that is like a mirror in shadow. A mirror doesn't lie and shadow never leaves. I also think that that kind of connects. I don't want, you don't want to be a patron. You don't want to be a leader. You want to find community with others like yourself. Um, but, but I think you might be one of a few in this that can go to the outer regions. But, you know, it could be. There are certain places that you could live where it is more natural to look into the wild and magical sort of things. Um, that's certainly something that, that Damien Eccles was talking about and being in New Orleans, for instance. So... That, that's interesting. And then another part of the egregoric energy, cycle, Sobek. Three grand essentials to happiness in this life are something to do, to love, and something to hope for. So you, you want action. You, want, you don't want to just sit and just you know retire. You want to see action. You want to connect, all of those sort of things. Um, it's interesting, though, I was saying he be dragons, and Sobek is a crocodile god, crocodile 
headed dogs or a reptilian sort of energy from Egypt. And then Cerberus, of course, is the hounds of hell. So this is definitely showing you're kind of in those outer realms, finding people who are like that. So what, how does your energy, how would your energy around that alchemize the, the egregoric energy? If, the, if what you're drawn to is something that is, is prepared to go to the outer realms and, and understands the cycles of life and finding your own people, your own kind, around Cerberus we get... Wow, the red and white rose. So the red and white rose are two symbols of stages at the alchemical, in the alchemical process. I had somebody comment when I used this card at one point saying, oh, no, 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 how could you call it that? There's a serpent. But that's just, that's just a physical representation of what happens with the white rose. It's called the red and white rose. And if you understand alchemy, you understand that red rose is the, the physical embodiment of the spirituality later in the system you get the white rose which white absorbs all the colors so it absorbs that in and it celebrates the concept that you can't have alchemy without the connection of both the spiritual and the material so i feel for you that this needs to be a place where where what your calling is is reflected in what you do materially this is why we saw the energy with the king of coins as well so in you finding your people, it needs to be people where you can connect spiritually and materially. And then in terms of Sobek, with the cycles, with understanding how to keep yourself interested, which I think you're a naturally curious person, so this is something you would need to do, we get solace, the sun. Yeah, yeah that's how you follow your life path, by finding the thing to do. You, you really don't want, this is not, you're not at a point, even if, you, even if you're at the age where you think you are at the point where you'd want to retire, you actually don't want to retire. You always need something to do. You're always going to be active. That's part of it. And it needs to be a place that allows you to do that. Okay. So let's have a look at some stars to guide you in finding other things to think about astrologically in finding your place if you haven't already. If you're already somewhere that lets you do it, it's perfect. Water. Okay, it could be, I'm just going to say, somewhere near the water might be something that's important for you. Um, but beyond that, I think there's sort of like things that allow you to get to the emotional depths, you know, with Cancer, Scorpio and Pisces. Taurus, yeah, the good life, being able to make this, turn this into something material, that is part of this. It's also saying you can be quite stubborn <laughs> and you probably need to be. You, if you want to really find the right place, you've got to find the place that allows you to be who you are rather than trying to change you. And square, yeah, you're prepared to take the action. You don't mind a little bit of pushback. That doesn't bother you at all. That's part of what's interesting and exciting about it. So, so you're no pushover. Um, but you do have to find the place that does allow the kind of wildness that you can really explore things properly. Okay, so lastly, we're just going to close out with a card from your 5D self from the Rainbow Oracle for any last advice about finding your, your spiritual home. Pile one. Eternal queen, make way for the queen in your life. Honor her many crowns. Yeah, you are the queen. Um, not, we're not talking about gender here. You are the queen, the divine feminine, the, the, the curious one, the, the wild, witchy one, the one who wants to, to be sovereign and true to yourself and follow your true calling. So I think you, you just have to find somewhere that allows you to express that, allows you to look into things and doesn't turn around and want you to just lead. It's sort of like where you can find community rather than people who just want to be mini-me's. I think that's the main energy for you. I hope you enjoyed the reading. If so, please like the video and subscribe. If you care uh, to share in the comments, I'd, lo I'd love to hear. Otherwise, I hope to see you in future readings. Welcome, part two, to your reading. So you came to the reading with the Hierophant. Uh, and a few things occur to me with the Hierophant as a kind of energy, egregoric energy for a place to be. The Hierophant is associated with things like higher learning. So it could be places that have great colleges, universities, that kind of thing. Uh, it could be where you could work in those or that you could study in those. It can be organizations, um, workplaces, towns that, that are very much ruled by things to do with, with sort of regulation, politics and so forth. So, you know, Washington DC, for instance, in America. Uh, it can be also the sort of energy of, of just religious or spiritual doctrine. It, it's 
Like I always think the Hierophant is like doctrine, whereas like the High Priestess is like the, the mystery schools, the magician is like high magic, temperance is like alchemy. The Hierophant is like doctrine. It doesn't mean that there's, you, know, you could be in the mystical end of that, but it's, it's got a kind of a doctrine. Whatever it is, there's a kind of almost academic or structural energy around this. So architecture too, for some reason. I feel like the Hierophant is very much like the architect. So, so places with tradition, like you, you may really like um, cities, for instance, that have been around for a very long time, and you can you can see, you know, in the architecture, the sort of history, or you know, somewhere like London, where some occultists will say that even the way, and this is true also, I think, of Washington D.C. and some of the other major cities, there's something in the way the architecture and the town planning was done that actually has within it occultic patterns and so forth. So it depends what your interest is, whether it's primarily spiritual or academic or or policy political. But there is, it's a seat of power, a seat of knowledge. Those sort of things, I think, are part of what would draw you to a place and part of the energy you know, to contribute to that. Because here, when we have a look at the kind of emotional energy, there is a sort of sense of calm, almost academic. And I'm not doing that just because a person has glasses. I'm doing it because of, you know, because sometimes people associate glasses with sort of like study and reading a lot and so forth. But I'm doing it because there is a sense of calm and there is a sense of I know my place and I understand where I am and I'm comfortable in things when they're sort of ordered and, and sensible and calm. Like there's a real sense of calm around this. It's like it's stood the test of time. But the interesting thing is around the, almost the music, the sound energy for you is the inventor with David Bowie. Is the, so it's, it's almost as though within a very well-established structure, it's like you can then find a playground. So it's sort of like if it was if it was a very old and stuffy sort of place that like you couldn't change anything, then it wouldn't be right. But if it was a place that had a deep sense of history, um, knowledge, learning, all of those things, but it also allowed for exploration, that would be an ideal energy for you in terms of like almost the music, the, the hearing, hearing that kind of thing. I mean, I'm getting for some of you too, like music could be very strongly associated with it around that's how you actually connect to the more sort of dogma side of things, like hearing church bells or things like that. But by and large, I think it's, it's you want to feel comfortable within a structure that history, relevance, knows what it is. You can like, you can learn just by being there, but also allows for the new to come in and allows you to pursue something that's probably very passionate, very creative to you. I find it really interesting. We've got these, these sort of scarlet colors, both in David Bowie and then scarlet here. You're a very intense person. You come across as very calm, but still, you know, rivers run deep, as they say. You you want that sense of history, that sense of knowledge, that sense of order, because within that, that's where you can explore and be passionate. It gives you a sense of a kind of a structure around it. I just feel like you're someone who's drawn to old places with lots of history, but you're drawn to bring the new in, interestingly enough. Um, and, and people might not realize that at first because you seem to be very calm in what you do, but it's that it's there you know that that's where the new civilizations can be seated, where there is the knowledge and the understanding. Like I could imagine you back in the day going to the, the Library of Alexandria and looking into all of that and learning about the past to know how to bring the new society, the new world in, that kind of thing. That's the energy that you have. And a place that allows for that, I think, is, is your ideal spiritual home. So let's get the tarot and let's have a look a little bit more detail. Look, let's look, look a bit more about what your true home place feels like, looks like. Then how do you create this with others? You know, in that kind of egregore sort of sense, and then how are you different from others in this place? So firstly, just a little bit more about the ideal spiritual home for you. Okay, so I'm going slowly here, and there's actually one where I'm going to have to cover it up. Um, I'm going slowly in case there is the nudity, so there's a small amount of nudity there, so I'm just going to cover it up till we cover up the thing. So the Queen of Coins, the Nine of Swords reversed, the Seven of Pentacles, the High Priestess reversed. Okay, and I need another, another couple for this, actually. The Devil reversed. And there aren't all that many cards, but you've got two of them that have the sort of slightly explicit sort of artwork. So... 
It is, it is more about established things. I think you like an established thing rather than sort of something where everything is um, mysterious. It, you want to be able to find the information. So this is what I say. It's like I could imagine you going to the library in Alexandria. It's that kind of sense of like you want to be able to access information. You don't want to be sort of somewhere where you can't. Now, of course, that's interesting in this current world because we can access a lot via the internet, but it's almost like you would kind of go, that's not going to be my first choice. I want I want to see the, the, the original texts. I want to see the stuff because I don't fully trust um, what's online, and you wouldn't be wrong with that. So there's definitely something about where you can uncover stuff, where things, where mysteries can be solved for you, and where something has a... A solid foundation. It stood the test of time. And so therefore the worries that could be associated with looking into the new can be let go of because, you know, it's kind of like, this is safe. This is somewhere I can live. This is somewhere I could stay long term. It allows you therefore then to grow. It's certainly a place where it would be likely it was important to you to be able to find a job or something like that, that allowed you to to be able to feel confident that you can grow materially, that feels safe and secure. Therefore, you can look for what you're wanting to look for. But you don't want it to be a place where it's all just about the money. Like there is definitely something here about, you know, spiritual or philosophical or academic sort of pursuits or living the right life, what it means to live the right life, not just the, the, the monetarily uh, good life, um, and, and where you are able to explore your passions and things that really matter to you. I think that many of you are very studious or very inquisitive on that level, and it's like it, you would be drawn to, as I say, the places that they have the history so that you can really see how something evolves and work out what the next steps are. So that's interesting. So then how do you and others, if you're in this place, create that kind of egregoric energy like that, a place of learning, stability, but also openness to the new. So I'm going to actually put this in a slightly different place to where I would, but just so that I can cover that up. So the Ten of Swords reversed, the Fool reversed, the Page of Swords, and the Magician. It's a little bit too high for me to shift that, so we're just going to have to live with the, the things for the moment there. Okay, so there's definitely something about letting go of any of the sort of like the, the battles, or the, the kind of philosophical, spiritual, political, social, whatever battles of the past. This is like, this is not about... This is using this as a, a history that allows you to move forward, you know, with confidence. You know, they, they say that prophets understand the history. This is how they how they actually can see the future because they understand the history. Actually, I can move this up a little bit. So there's there's definitely that. It's like there's something about this area where you have a foundation where you can go confidently. Yeah, I know, I know what what we can do to avoid the historical mistakes of the past we can see that we have the record we know we've got the we've got the regulations to stop that happening we've got the rules whatever it might be we've got the learnings and therefore all of you that are drawn to this are ones that like understand that who have have worked out that it's good to be innovative but you need to have a solid basis of knowing how you innovate innovate like just being the fool going forward with the fool upright is a little bit risky so I think others like that with you that understand the implications, the consequences of things. Um, you communicate a lot together. It could, there could be quite a bit online around this. So I don't know that you would overly trust online. But nevertheless, there's a lot of communication with others who are similarly, have similar skills. Like you probably would bring together collectives that had, had different different sort of skills maybe, but, but all go towards the sort of mastery energy that, that this is talking about. I'm just moving this up a bit so we've got plenty of room for the next row. Okay, so, so together it's like how you bring different skills, different mastery, communicate together because you all understand that part of the point about being in a place where you have the history and you understand the history is how you avoid the mistakes of the history. So it's very wise. How are you different from the, the people you know, in, in this place? What do you bring that is different? The world. The star. Justice. Wow. 
in quite big ways. I mean, that's three major arcana cards. Um, I think that you are maybe more worldly in general than most of the people in the place you go. I think it may be that you've traveled the world quite a bit, whether literally or whether it's sort of online and through your study. You have a very strong sense of the completion of things. This is why you understand the importance of being in a place like this. You're also very aspirational, and I just realized that I probably need to cover that up as well. <laughs> You're very aspirational, and, and you have a very strong sense of social justice. So you, this is why social justice is like you do want the rules, but you also want to make sure that it's open enough for if there were rules that were actually count, counter to what would be socially just, you can actually... That's where, you, that's where you bring your passion and your attention to, to make things better. Uh, but you've got a very strong sense of what is just there. It, this could draw a lot of people. You, the, a lot of people in this group could be lawyers or people who work in social policy or something like that. You know, I can sort of see you know, Washington, D.C., you know, London, um, Canberra in Australia. I'm just sort of thinking about the, the seats of power on that kind of level. But also anywhere that you know, has the sort of Ivy League colleges, that kind of thing as well. Or, you know, going to, to Rome or something like that, if you're looking at a spiritual thing, you know, and, and Vatican City or something like that. But you are wanting to kind of do something different with it, with the understanding of history and the understanding of consequences. Okay, so let's have a look at almost a celestial energy around this, and then we'll have a look at an earthly energy, just to see what else your nature would draw you towards, you know, what kind of energy around your spiritual home. Celestial reverie. Okay, so this is all about connecting to the higher realms, being able to consider and think about the realms. Like I, I feel like many of you may be very, um, the, your, your psychic ability may be very channeled, might be transmediumship, maybe sort of like a direct connection on that level, and it's, that's where you get the inspiration. But there's something about being in these places, I say, you know, like modern-day occultists will say to you, if you went to somewhere like London, that just the way that the, the town planning is done has all kinds of occult energy and symbolism operating there. Or, you know, you, the people talk about the ley lines, you know, like and, and where the energy is there. I think you would be very, very attuned to that kind of thing. So let's also have a look at what the earth power. So this is a place on earth. It doesn't mean you have to live in this place on earth, but it's, again, something else to give you a bit of an idea about the type of place you could make your spiritual home. Wow, the Cathedral Notre Dame. Yeah, that fits exactly with this. We've got a Cathedral Notre Dame, you know, so France, but, you know, like like old-time France, like going back to where, you know, the kind of the the root of Christianity and, and, you know, the other major religions, all that sort of thing. So there's definitely a sort of sense of that. You're drawn to that for some reason, but it is to bring something new in, um, connected to your spiritual realms. But, like, it's definitely, yeah, it's like, it's like places with, with the architecture and, and, and the iconography and all that kind of thing. There's something in that for you, definitely. Okay, so then let's also have a look at the kind of mystical energy. So if we're talking about egregores, I thought it would be useful to, to look at kind of mystical um, beings and how they could be representative of some of the egregoric energy that you and others would create there. And then have a look at using an alchemy deck, how you alchemize energy to help bring that egregoric thing into, into play. So firstly, we have the Dwilgi. Um, timing. Life is too short to miss out on being really happy. Kiss slowly, laugh insanely, love truly and forgive quickly. So this is, is um, some form of canine entity and seems to be about getting the right timing, knowing the right timing for bringing in the new, understanding the importance of time, times past, that kind of thing. And then also... Oh, wow. Dragons, flexibility. Your life does not not get better by chance it gets better by change so you do want to bring change in but yeah again ancient wisdom ancient knowledge ancient power with the dragon okay so let's have a look and see what the dwilgi and the energy of that that what you alchemize you know with the others you know to to create the right energy here for you 
smoke. Okay, so this is an interesting stage in the alchemical process. It's in, in this sort of stage where things are being burnt down to purify. So there's sort of like the energy of change and so forth. But it's where you work out. Is the smoke working for you or is it a fire that needs to be put out? So I think this is all about the nexus between the tradition that you are honoring, but also the change that you're bringing in and that kind of fiery energy. Where is the fiery energy, right? Where would it be too much or it's not the right time for it? And then with the dragon, connecting in with very ancient wisdom, knowledge, and so forth, we have the reddening. See, the reddening. This is all about how you make this your passion. It's sort of almost academic till you get there. And when you're there, it ceases to be academic. It becomes very passionate, very fiery. And it's like how you kind of like, that's part of what you bring. You're bringing a fiery, passionate, creative, new energy to a very old, established place. But, but you know the power and the importance of the old, established place and of understanding and researching what you're dealing with. Okay, so let's see how the stars can guide you to find this place if you haven't already found it, Pole 2. South Node, there's something that you need to move away from in the past. So it may even be that some of you have gone to somewhere a bit like this, but it hasn't been right because it hasn't allowed enough of a move from the past. So it does need to be somewhere that does allow the new as well. Waning Crescent Moon, the surrender, release control of the universe, assess your values, shine inward. So this is like, it's like, it, it's going to come to you more by chance than anything. If you just look for these sort of things, you'll find the right place almost when the timing is right. And first quarter moon, when that happens, you can then pick up speed, make decisions and so forth. So this might be why there's the world. You might have been looking for this for quite some time. When you find it, you'll know, though, and then you'll really start to move quickly. Okay, just to finish off, I just want to see what your 5D self has to say about all of this energy and your ideal spiritual home, part two. Oh, this is funny. This came up for one of the other piles. Eternal Queen. This is definitely, I think it's funny that it's that card because it's like, it makes perfect sense in many ways that you would come into your mastery, your sovereignty when you were in your ideal place. So I think that this is really, and then all that sort of fiery, passionate energy can come forward. You can express what is new and what is true to you, but in a place of great tradition, great history, great knowledge, really shine. And like for some of you, it might be that you're meant to be academically brilliant or scientifically brilliant or or you know, like rise from, you know, being a initiate, you know, or a, a novice or a priest in, you know, Christianity and become Pope or something like this. There's something here about you really coming into who you are. That's, that's the key thing. So I hope that that resonates for you. I hope you enjoyed the reading. If so, please like the video and subscribe. If you care to share in the comments, I'd love to hear. Otherwise, I hope to see you in future readings. Welcome, Pile 3, to your reading. So you came to the reading with the Wheel of Fortune. And like what that immediately makes me think of are places that are, you know, like known for being places of fortune or chance. So, you know, whether it's like Las Vegas in, in America, for instance, or any of the financial capitals of the world or um, any kind of environment where luck, luck is very important and so forth. That, that, that would seem to be part of it, like a sort of sense of the wheel of fortune like that somewhere where you could make your fortune like that seems to be part of this and particularly when i look at the kind of the 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 color energy so the sight energy what it looks like feels like on that level what it feels like emotionally what it sounds like there's a real sense of eureka aha i found it this is wonderful where you can be very successful, I mean, we've got Beyonce showing up here as, you know, as, as an energy of what you could achieve, like what, what is the, the, the melody, the sound of this, it's the sound of success, and the fact that we've even got like the kind of playing cards, like it feels a lot like something like, you know, where there's a big casino or something like that, it doesn't mean you have to spend your life in casinos, or that I am in any sense um, speaking well of gambling because i think you have to be very careful about that but i think that there is an energy here of like where is their luck where is their fortune to be made where can i rise to the top and i think it's also somewhere where you feel you can you can really kind of like stay and do what you do because it's like look at these material things it's like the wheel is is stopping to pick things up you know and, and wanting to pick them up and stay in a place and do something with it because we've got moss here breeding growth reproduction so i think you want the fortune for yourself for your family 
for a, a, a dynasty, for a legacy. But I also, you know, just heard when I put it down, you know, that the, what do they say, a rolling stone gathers no moss. So this is sort of like, if you want moss, if you want growth, you need to stay somewhere. It's somewhere that you could stay long enough for the wheel of fortune to take you to the very top and that you would feel excited about being. That like the, the, the amount of opportunity here is much bigger than elsewhere. For whatever it is that fortune means to you. Now, fortune might mean to you that, you know, you have a, a farm somewhere, you're, you're, you have all organically grown food and you feel completely off the grid and you're not, you know, not beholden to anyone. So it doesn't have to be, you know, that you're famous or you're rich or any of those things. But I think this is like the thing for you is working out what is the nature of fortune that would make you feel that kind of level of excitement and, and openness. Where do you think you could actually rise to the top for what you're wanting to do? And where could you settle down and, and create a dynasty, a family, whatever else you might want to do? So this is about finding your fortune. That's what it's about. So And it's finding a place, I think, that you would want to stay and grow in. So let's use the tarot and get a little bit more information. We're firstly going to get just a little bit more about what this ideal home is. Then we're going to look at how you and others there egregorically create a spirit. And then we'll also look at what is different that you bring to it than others. You know, how your contribution to that energy really impacts the place. So, a bit more about the ideal for you. The Hermit reversed. The High Priestess reversed. The Ten of Wands reversed. The Six of Pentacles reversed. Don't worry that they're all reversed. It's just, it's just telling us something sort of... Yeah, and the full reversed. Okay. All right. So, if, for instance, and I'm just going to use this for instance, you wanted to go to somewhere like Las Vegas and live there and build your fortune. In fact, it's probably not a very good example, actually. I don't think it is where chance or gambling is involved. I don't, I don't think that's the case at all with this, actually. This is more that you want a place where you kind of understand it, where it's not mysterious. You understand the system. You don't have to work too hard to achieve it because you really get the place and you get what they value and all that kind of thing. And you would be seen as at least an equal and someone who really knew what they were doing. Because, like, the kind of the, the Las Vegas energy, I think, would feel too risky. And you want sort of somewhere that, that you can stay and, and build with it. So, but this is somewhere where you at the very least would be seen as an equal and be able to grow from there. Because the Hermit Reverse suggests you want to be seen in some way. This is the Beyonce energy as well. This is like, you know, to be seen as, as important here. And the High Priestess Reverse, that you've understood it's not a mystery to you. You know how to be successful here. You know what it takes. Ten of Wands, you can reduce the burdens on others and on yourself as a result of knowing that. And you are seen as at least at an equal. This is somewhere that you wouldn't go and be felt like a junior. You would be at least an equal, the professional class in some way, something like that. And that you understand it really, really well. So your idea where you will settle down is somewhere where you feel like, yeah, aha, uh -huh, I found the place, the place that I really get, I really understand. You may travel a bit, and this might be why I got the Rolling Stone Gathers No Moss. It might be that you travel um, around until you find this. Because you're looking very specifically for somewhere that, that the, the egregoric energy, the zeitgeist, the, the nature of what is valued there gels with what you have to offer. And when you find that, it's like, aha, this is the feeling. This is what I want. So I think it's really about where can you make your fortune? That's what this is about in whatever that means to you. So let's see how you and others create the egregoric energy, the sort of spiritual energy there. That, that allows you to recognize it as the place where you really fit in and you're going to be really successful. Got the Six of Swords reversed. The Page of Coins. The Seven of Cups. And the Magician. Okay. So it, this is why it's amongst equals. I think this is a place where you find people you can collaborate with, people who are similarly spiritually advanced, people who are bringing maybe different skills to bear, a kind of gestalt effect where each of you sort of somewhere else not knowing each other could not be as successful as coming together and, and bringing your particular expertise to play. Um, like in, in terms of uh, organisation rather than a place, but just as an example, it could be like in some of the big 
the big consulting firms where there's all sorts of backgrounds and all sorts of expertise that are brought together to create sort of project teams that are then able to do something that each of those individually couldn't do. So there may be something around that, finding your people, the people who fill in the jigsaw so that you can all be successful. You want, and the other people around you want lots of options. Yeah, lots of dreams. This is a place of dreams. You want to be able to, to manifest them, have, have a plan to manifest them, but it's a place that needs to be aspirational. If you go somewhere where you think, oh, yeah, I could be successful here, but only so far because people aren't really that interested, it's not going to work for you. You are very aspirational, so that's important. And, and you like a little bit of, you, you want to know the terrain, but you do want to know that it's not like, what you bring is is already known. It's like you bring something that is new to the to the table. You know, you you fill a piece that wasn't there. You you take it in a direction that wouldn't have been there if you hadn't been there. So this is the again the Beyonce thing. It's like you're not meant to be necessarily. You could work in a group, but you're still. And they could be equals in terms of the different things they bring in, but there's still something very special about you. That's important to this energy. So given that, what is special about you? What would you bring to this place? energetically that isn't there really with others the eight of cups the knight of coins reversed just making sure i don't need to cover anything and the hierophant okay what you're bringing you're bringing a lot of learning a lot of skill a lot of understanding but also it's like you're bringing only what matters with that. So you're, you're able to let go of emotional things that are no longer serving. You don't stay loyal to things materially if they aren't going to work. You're very able to move on. So as I'm saying, I feel like you kind of travel a bit to find this and you've been able to work out what doesn't work. But you are also always learning with that and you can teach others and you, you kind of get the systems that you're operating in. Maybe a bit better than the others. Maybe because you've tried them out and seen them in other places. But you, you really do get the structure of things and the systems of things. Um, so that's part of what you bring. But it's also the capacity to, I'm only going to stay if it's right. It's a sort of a sense of, of I'm, I'm open to, to the search. But I bring, because of that, a lot of knowledge that I think people recognise. This is You'll know that you're in the right place when that is recognised. And it might be you feel at first in a work organisation and then you realise, okay, it's, it's happening here and that's got to do with the energy of the place that I'm living. Okay, so let's have a look at what that looks like almost celesti celestially and also on an earth level. So we're going to get the celestial codex and we're just going to look at a kind of celestial energy around this ideal place for you. And then we're going to look at the earth power deck to just get a, a, a place on earth. It doesn't have to be the place. It's just to get another sort of energy that's similar um, or, or would align to what you're looking for. So the celestial codex eclipsed eternity. Oh my goodness. I might have to look that one up. It's a very interesting energy. I'm not familiar with every card in this deck yet, so I just wanted to look it up. It's, I think it's picking up the Six of Swords reverse, what you bring to this. Because this is where there's a kind of a shattering in the presumptions of things. And where, because of that, we see the unfathomable and we see that which is in eternity that is, is almost unknowable. It's that moment of sort of seeing that. So I think there's something about you in this space that, that causes a shock. And that's, that's kind of also how it creates your momentum towards success because it's sort of like you've seen beyond just the learning and, and you've been able to walk away from things that, that you could see are not aligned. But you're also able to look at something in a way that most people can't. So that's I think that's part of it. It's part of your inspiration. Very interesting, though, in energy. It's like you need somewhere where you can sometimes shock the system to, to take it to the next level, I think. Okay, so then when we look at what does that look like on Earth? We have the Ajanta Caves. So that's in India. That's a sort of like Buddhist sort of thing, a kind of Zen energy. It's almost opposite energy in a way. Maybe it's not exactly opposite, but like Buddhism and the, the, this sort of like energy of being Zen almost feels kind of calm. So it's sort of like, 
being able to shock the calm, take it to a new level and return it to calm because you have the skills to do it. This says enlightenment is a journey yeah and you've journeyed to find this i show compassion to myself and all living beings i can be centered within chaos okay yeah that's got something to do with it all my past lives have brought me to this perfect moment of realization and wisdom so yeah what you're bringing you are able to be in chaos in a way that others that's part of what you bring to this and that's part of what creates the fortune because order out of chaos that kind of thing creativity comes out of chaos and so forth so you don't have to go to India, it's just an energy, an earthly energy similar to it. So let's have a look at a more mystical thing. Let's have a look at some mythological creatures as, as part of the energy, the egregoric energy, and then we'll look with an alchemy deck around how you alchemize that energy to create what you want in this place and to identify and know that you're in the right place. So firstly... Wow, harpy, change. To change your life, you have to change yourself. To change yourself, you have to change your mindset. You are about pushing the envelope. It's interesting, everybody to some degree has been in this. So I think there's sort of like an energy of change. You, you all bring an energy of change to the places that you would call home. Um, it's also being able to keep on at something. Like once you've done it, like to keep on at something because the harpy kind of harps on, it makes a lot of noise. <laughs> so I think there's a sort of sense of that you're able to articulate it and really push your point when you need to because you have this different perspective to most people. And then we also have the pixie sanctuary. You're the child of the divine universe and you carry a spark of that divinity with you within you. So even when you're pushing the envelope, you're getting like you're bringing a different skill set, a different piece to the recipe to bring fortune in um, and you're able to look at that eternity to be able to see that you're also able to create a safe space for this to occur and for other people to connect with you so what's the alchemy around that the alchemy around the change energy the harpy is calling you to do so you're not going to go to this place and just kind of fit in and that's fine and i suddenly make my fortune you're going to actually there's something that you do that shifts it to another level and probably means for all of you you do better than it would otherwise have been so the alchemy energy around the harpy, quicksilver, you're very quick. You're very quick with communication, with seeing things and with making change. It's a very volatile substance, quicksilver. So there is something volatile about this, but you're able to quickly assess the situation, partly because you've got a really good sense about what it is and isn't. There's something here about speed. You're able to move with speed. You're able to see and communicate with speed to be able to, to bring about the best outcome. So there's nothing slowing you down here. That's one of the other things. It's not a ponderous place. The Wheel of Fortune moves pretty quickly. People move quickly in this environment. And the Sanctuary Energy, Spring, it's how you can bring something new into being. It's how you protect the change and all of that volatility and make it sort of a place of blossoming energy and so forth. So, so people... People see that you protect the ultimate outcome, even if you really kind of like are a little bit of a, a lightning rod or almost a tower energy sometimes to really shake it up. They can see that you're still protecting the main outcome and that there is going to be a blossoming energy coming out of it. Okay, so let's see how the stars could guide you to this place if you haven't already found it. Taurus. This is about finding the good life. This is about enjoying life. This is about success, success for everybody and, and in the way. It's a very second house sort of place. It's like I want, I want to make my fortune. I want, to, I want to have the lifestyle that I want. I want the status that I want. I want the, the home that I want, all that kind of thing. And there's nothing wrong with that. Then we have Aries. Yes, and I'm ambitious enough to do it and I'm prepared to be a self-starter and I'm just going to like bring in new things and new ideas till I get there. And... The sun, because that's who I am. That's my life path. Wouldn't mind betting some of you have the sun in either the first or the second house. So re really who you are is very important to this or the lifestyle that you're trying to bring in. You don't have to, but I wouldn't be surprised for some of you if that was the case. Okay, to finish off, we just want to get an idea from your 5D self, what you feel about you in this place of the, the spiritual home.
Apprentice, inspired learning is the call of the soul in pursuit of self-mastery. Be courageous in your emerging talents. So I think your 5D self says you are bringing a lot of learning. You are able to sort of like stir the pot up. You are able to get successful, but don't get complacent. See this all as a learning thing. You're going to find the place where you really end up with the lifestyle you want. But it's like keep learning though within that. Like take on the concept of the lifelong learner because it'll always keep you ahead of the curve. It'll always keep you understanding and keep the fortune operating for you. This is, this is maybe a life and a place to be that is apprentice for even higher order thing in some other life as well. But right now you're just meant, you're meant to be successful. You're meant to stir the pot a bit to get it successfully. You're meant to be seen. And I think seen as equals with what you do, but your spirit team is saying, don't learn, lose the learner mindset because that's still going to help you. It's always going to help you. It's helped you to get where you are and it will continue to do so. So I hope that that resonates for you. I hope you enjoyed the reading. If so, please like the video and subscribe. If you care to share in the comments, I'd love to hear. Otherwise, I hope to see you in future readings.